So my name is Menya. I've been in Japan for 11 years. I'm from outside of Boston, Massachusetts, and I work as a health coach here in Tokyo, Japan. This is my baby. This is my baby. Sparky. The single greatest drawback about living in Japan, as an American in particular, is having to... Because it's Sunday, the first thing we're going to do is head to Yogi Park for boot camp. Boot camp is every Sunday at 10 a.m. here in Tokyo. I've been doing that work primarily for the past year, year and a half. So all of my clients are actually online. So one of the reasons I love Sogo Bootcamp so much is it's that opportunity for me to come and interact with people who are really into fitness kind of face to face. Because especially now that COVID is a thing, this doesn't happen as much. So Sogo Bootcamp was started four and a half years ago by myself, Mike and Maha. And as you can see, Bootcamp has grown into a kind of behemoth of an event. Yogi Park is one of the biggest parks in Tokyo, so we decided to do it here because basically we can reach the most people. So we can kind of connect with the most people who are coming in and out of the park. And there are two variations. One is a straight push-up, one's going to be a knee push-up. This is the position you should be in when you're in your plank. And then the next leg goes out, nothing changes. 22 seconds left, right at the bottom, but your body is not touching the ground. I know it's tough. If you've already died, that's okay. Just try redoing it. Sanzo! Sanzo! So we are at We Are The Fit, which is the gym that Risa and I go to. It's a 24 hour gym, it's kind of like Anytime Fitness, but honestly it's just better. Um, you'll see it when we get inside. I usually work out five times a week. I usually do Monday through Friday, and typically I actually do Saturday and Sunday off. This week was just weird, so that's why I'm here on Sunday. I mean, I do a lot of my workouts in a gym environment, but I, I come to the gym to strength train. So uh, I'm in the gym five days a week, I do yoga virtually every morning. So this space is specifically for strength training with regard to muscular hypertrophy and like strength. So we just left the gym, we're gonna go home, say hi to the kitties. Hopefully the kids have been doing their homework and like practicing piano and all that good stuff. So we'll do that and then we're gonna meet Risa for dinner with her and her crew. That'll be right now. Later. So I just got home. Ugh. Kids have finished their homework, which is good. <laughs> so this is Ranzo, guys. Okay? Hello. Hi. Okay, so. My name is Joshua, nice to meet you. Joshua, Ranzo, nice to meet you. He's finally learned to do it. Hi, Luna. <laughs> Hi, my name is Luna. Hi, Luna. Nice Ranzo, to meet you. nice to meet you as well. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Okay, nice. Dexta! 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 I wonder what's my one hour of YouTube. You just did it? <laughs> oh, yeah, you. Are you done with your Yeah. Yeah, I finished everything. Okay, I'll cut We're going to come inside soon. Actually, I was um, reading it the whole time. Okay. Reading and the math. Okay. Because you said you have to do it. Oh, okay. But I did some different things on different. Okay, okay. Living with kids. <laughs> Welcome home, guys. Kai-kun is going to show us a song he's practicing on piano. And uh, and then we'll do a little bit jamming.
personally, I've been playing piano since I was his age, so since I was eight years old. And when I started, I started because I was fascinated by how somebody could sit down at this instrument and make it do things that sounded nice. <laughs> She's the shy one. Luna's the very shy one. Thank you, Luna. Before I started getting into this whole fitness space, I more than anything, I think I wanted to become a, a professional full-time musician. And so piano is still a hobby. It's still something I practice. I love jazz, contemporary music, huge part of who I am, and I wouldn't be who I am without this. But um, fitness is definitely where my heart's at now. Yeah. So we're headed to dinner with mommy. Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance? Oh, I wish it was me. So we are at a place called Barbacoa and we're here for Risa's Fierce Camp annual reunion. So kind of all these girls here are part, they're all certified in a, in a format that Risa created, my wife. So this is my baby. This is my baby. Um, so I'm explaining kind of what this is. Mm -hmm. So um, I've created a program called Fierce Camp and these are all of the trainers, not all of them, but some of the trainers. And. Uh, did a annual gathering where I taught them new moves and like techniques on how to grow their booty, <laughs> um, like cueing, teaching, all of that. And so that was like a two hour thing in a big studio and now we're here sort of celebrating, getting to know each other. So basically when you when you go to a restaurant and you're looking at what you should be eating, you always want to start with nutrient rich food first. So if you look at the plate, basically it's a whole bunch of vegetables to start. And then I have meat on the left. So the idea here is to fill up on the really kind of nutrient dense, but not extremely calorie rich food. So this is basically just vegetables full of micronutrients and a good kind of macronutrient profile. When you're done with this, then you can kind of go back and do your sugary stuff. So like I'll probably get ice cream tonight. We're out as a family, we're with the kids. It's not really a big deal, but the goal is to start with the good stuff. And if you're going to eat any of the bad stuff, end with the bad stuff. Never, ever, ever start with the bad oh, stuff and then go good. It just doesn't work. Stop it. I can fly, I can fly. So we just came from dinner. This is the fam. So this is me. So 16 weeks pregnant, one in the oven. And then uh, we have Joshua here, Kaito, and Luna. Josh is eight and Luna's 11. My experience in Japan overall has been fantastic. I have been able to pursue everything I've ever really wanted to pursue. I've made extraordinary lifelong friends. I've come into my own in a way that I don't know that I would have had I stayed in Massachusetts or in the States. And I, I couldn't be happier to have made a decision to pick up my stuff and move across the world to explore living a new life in a completely different culture uh, and a completely different country from the one that I was raised in. What I like the most about Japan as an individual is, is the ability to pursue my passions here and grow them out into work that I'm able to sustain myself with and also grow into like real meaningful, fulfilling work. To be honest, I think I could do something very similar in the States. Like if I, if I lived where I was raised in Massachusetts, I do think I'd still be able to do essentially what I'm doing here. But there's something about, especially living in a city as kind of dynamic and in a sense transient as Tokyo, Tokyo that's allowed me to do that in a way that's just a little bit different than being at home. I think if I just stayed at home, the pressure to like have kids, settle down, or get a master's degree, do some white collar job would be so much more pressing than it is here. But here, 
especially in the environment that I'm in, it's just so, there's this hustle, there's this kind of Tokyo hustle that exists here in the city and it's like, I'm sure it's similar to what it's like in New York or Chicago or maybe London or any of the major cities around the world, but it's, it's special and it's, it's exciting and it's fast and even being a family man now, I, it, it, it's what gives me life in lots of ways and I, I love it. The single greatest drawback about living in Japan as an American in particular is having to learn the language. If, if I were doing exactly what it is I'm doing today, but I could speak fluent Japanese, my ability to scale and just do everything so much better and more efficiently would be like a thousand times X. So that is pretty frustrating. Being like a pretty articulate, reasonably well you know, educated person in English only takes you so far in, uh, when it comes to, to living in Japan because my Japanese is just not at that level. So probably entirely my own fault for not having put in as much time to study as I should. But in general, if you can speak Japanese, if you can speak Japanese in Japan fluently, like that already opens up doors. You could not know anything except how to speak the language and you can already kind of place yourself reasonably well here. So if I could combine that with my skill set, it would be next level. So that by far, that's because if you ever have any interest in coming to Japan, spend as much time as you can learning how to speak Japanese because it'll just be a massive aid to whatever your actual skill set is. So you can find me or Risa online on Instagram under Menyahinga, for Risa under Risa Pilates. You can find me on YouTube under the same name, Menyahinga. You can probably just Google Menyahinga and I'll pop up. MH Health Coaching as well. Again, I work as a health coach and I work with people worldwide. So if anyone watching this is interested in you know, working with me or seeing more about what I do, I'd be more than happy to talk to you. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked that video, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to this channel for weekly videos. Bye for now.